clever one. Joe from AXEC here. Um, got quite a few questions about the techniques I use for conduit, so I'm going to make a little video on them. Uh, first off, I'm going to like to use bend of the back of the bend method, which is using a set square off the edge of the former, which once we've measured, we get an accurate measurement. I'll show you that now quickly because each former can be different, so you're going to want to take your measurements as you go. But the best way to learn it is to dip this conduit, mark say 300mm, as I already have. I'm going to place it in the bender. Set square on the 300 mil mark. I'll show you this one. And then we'll place that at the edge of the former. Like try and keep the stop at the same height every time. Try and keep it level. Don't move it in these pins because they can vary your measurements too. Bring it down. We'll try and bend a 90 in one. By measuring up and measuring back from where I measured originally, you can see this time we get a measurement of 350. So that means all in, this has added 50 mil to my measurement when I measure from this side. Doesn't happen from this end, just so you know. So now I haven't taken the measurement off the wall, knowing that if we want 450 exactly. Mark it now on the conjure. Try and think about where your writing ends up. Usually, like to keep on the back of the bend so you can see it. Get a measurement of 450, but you know when we measure from this end, we have to minus 50 mil straight away. So it's a nice, easy, easy, easy measurement. At 40 mil. So we do our set square again. See, back of the former, conduit on there, try and keep this in the same position, you can see that little bit of movement, it does have an effect, so do take that into account, try and push your conduit forward so you're always going with the former, so that's the direction it will move when you do go to bend. So we're happy with that, we'll say, keep the right one on the back. For a 90, again double checking now 450. So that is the back of the bend with the BIB method. Okay, gives you accurate measurements from this edge to the end. Now, let's say you wanted to do these two pieces of contract, excuse the bends, exactly the same. This is the back of the thread method, so the BOT. So instead of marking here and threading back and hoping that you get to the right one and taking it off, threading more and less, we're going to line them up. We're going to mark where the end of the thread is, so that line, and then we're going to cut here and thread back. Pencil. Doing a lot of contract, definitely recommend one of these. 12 volt version is just as good. ratchet threader although it seems to be slipping these days so I used to recommend them but now I'm not so sure of them. I'm not sure if that can be seen in the video or not but the red line can be viewed through this gap. Conduit back off, thread it back off rather. Put 
just about to see the red line there. So this is going to be a pretty good one. Bearer. Bearer at the end. And I'll put it up next to this other piece of conduit. It should be exactly the same. Just lining up the bends. All the backs are the same. You can see. Pretty spot on as far as the threads go. So this one is a shorter thread, but it, that doesn't matter. It's not about the length on these. It's about where it ends. So that's the back of the bend and the back of the thread method both done now. Another one, depending on the sets that you're going to use, there's a quick tip for them. You always blend the same set each way, so it'll always be equal. So they'll always run parallel. You can do that by marking the side of your bender. A little red line now. Obviously, calculating your set, the best thing to do is offer a piece of conjure up and figure out where the next bend needs to begin. So, if it was there, again, keep your piece nice and straight, bend it down. Again, you only need to bend it back to that line you had. And then the set should be. A little bit wonky. The bars should be parallel to one another. So this one looks a little bit more. And it's better to do a little bit less than too much. That looks better. So it's a little bit wonky. But the actual set is now parallel. We actually have a spare former in our stores at the minute so I'm going to re-bend these and make sure I get them perfect each time and then mark on the bender exactly what one's what. So probably go for 90 degree, 45, 30 and a 22 and a half. Yeah, shouldn't ever need any more than that. So here we have the former which I've just now marked up. So we've got the start of the bend, OSOB, didn't engrave it too great but that's quite handy if you're trying to get isolators the same. Um, if you know exactly where your first bend ends and starts compared to the coupler. Then we've got minus 50, so this is the mark that allows you to now, instead of putting a set square on the end of the former, you just line it up in there and you'll get it on. It does mean if you're bending from this side of the former, you now need to minus 50 from that measurement. But again, you just line it up in here. And we've got 22 and a half degrees, 30 degrees. 45 and 90 and as you can see I've been playing around with a few bends to get them right. Hope this helps. Any questions drop them in the link below.